emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. Hi everyone, welcome, welcome. This is part 10 of the Trumpeter u boat build, this huge submarine, uh, the 148 scale U552 from Trumpeter, uh, and it's built by Ted, Ted at eModels, eModels.co.uk. Uh, yeah, it's quite an exciting part this, because um, I have a feeling this could be, this could be the penultimate episode. Um, after this, it's a matter of putting everything together, uh, doing a bit of painting and a bit of weathering, and then it's finished. After so long, yeah, it's finished. Um, what I've been doing since the last time, well, I've got all the crew, you can probably see them in there. I've got all the crew painted and assigned them to the posts throughout the boat. Um, I've got the hull together uh, and all the parts are done. I've actually reached the final assembly part uh, the page in the instructions so all the parts are now uh, finished they're all applied and yeah it's just a matter of putting it all together now all the sub assemblies are done uh, so I'll show you the whole later because I haven't got enough room here on the bench now so we'll have to go over there uh, to the dining table uh, I'll reconfigure everything and work out a way of showing you what all on the dining table um, what we're going to do in this part though is look at some lighting again I know that we've touched on it in the past uh, last time remember how we did the uh, the control room lighting let's see if it can work uh, where's the switch let's switch down that we'll go right there we are uh, we've got the lighting done in here last time and this is a section where we've got red lighting and white lighting uh, the next sections we're just going to put some white lighting in uh, and feed them all. One of the things that I have done is that I've tried all the compartments in the hull and I've found that the best way to do the wiring, uh, we'll look at that, is uh, to feed everything back to the control room and feed it all down behind the control room. Now you see here there's a great void behind there and there's a bags of room for uh, doing any connections, connecting everything up. And then all you need to do after that is run two wires, uh, uh, maybe a switch in this case, uh, two wires through the hull to your battery pack, and then you'll be all set. And you can maybe hide this away somewhere. I'm actually thinking if it's big enough, I've actually tried it yet. No, it's not big enough. But I'll actually I'll find a way of hiding it in the stand or something like that. This one isn't big enough, so I'll either have to find a smaller switch, a battery pack, or do, so, do something with this anyway. But uh, once it's out, uh, and you can, we can work on that later. Uh, right, how we're doing the lighting? Simple. As I say, we'll just recap and touch on this as we've done before. I'll just fetch another piece in. Uh, what we've got here. Yeah, this is the crew's quarters and the kitchen, the galley. See the chief, uh, the chef, chief, the chef just in the background. You can't really see him because he's dark. Uh, now what tra Trumpeter have done, I think, as uh, we've said before, I think that this um, boat is set up for lighting. That it's not come, uh, maybe, Trump and I haven't produced it yet, but not to fear. Um, Jennifer at JS Models, who um, 
I've been in touch with has actually created a set. Uh, I've given some uh, information and she's created a set of lighting to go throughout the whole U-boat. Uh, so uh, if, you, if anyone wants to look up JS Lighting uh, on uh, Google, you'll find the link uh, and it'll be uh, the, the details will be in there, how you can attend the lighting kit. Uh, you'll see in here, there's, uh, hopefully you'll see where the lights go, there's little dimples and that's the position of lights. Now in this one, there isn't a light in the galley and I think it'd be a shame to leave the little guy left in the dark. So what I'll do, I'll spread these out. Instead of that one there, I'll move it over here to him there. And all we do with them, uh, I need to get the lights. Now, back in a second. Here we are, got them. Uh, right, uh, they've come, they're little uh, nano chip LEDs, uh, little SMTs if you want to call them. They are very tiny. And uh, that's one, that's one there. Tiny, aren't they? So, all you need is a small mini drill and just drill in these what I'm going to try and do is what you want to do with these is actually get them between the frames uh, if you do move away the, the, the holes here the, the dimples will represent the exact location where they need to go but we're moving this one along over here so we'll put one two and three in there. So what we'll need to do is just move that to there. And just drill away. Just take your time, don't force it. Just let the drill do the work. Just do the one for now. There, through. It's a little bit difficult to see because everything's in shadow or where the guy's in the submarine. It must be really dark and dismal in these submarines. Now the the light itself, don't just put it through. Well, if we get it in the hole. Just if you leave it flush with the top, I'll try to get some light in there. If you leave it flush with the top of the frame, what it'll do, it will just create a shadow and light the frame up. So just drop it just a little bit. Now these are really tiny, so you won't notice them. Onto there, and now a drop of super glue. To hold it in place. Try not to stick your finger to it. Uh. Now then, so we don't get any light leakage, what I've done with this is just use a piece of filler or milliput, something like that. Uh, so I've already got mixed up. So uh, so you're not light leaking into the hull, especially if you've drilled out the freeing parts like we've seen that I've done. It's just put a piece over there and we can paint that up. We can paint that black later on. That's one thing I have done as well. Um, with drilling out the freeing parts in the hull, I'll show you, uh, as I say, I'll show you that soon. Uh, I thought that what may happen is if we put the um, compartments in the boat you may see the grey paint through the freeing ports which will detract from the visual appearance of it so I painted everything black on the on the outside of the uh, compartments so there's that one done it's, it's really is that simple now if I find the battery pack I could just try it So as I say, what we're doing then is just making sure we've got enough length 
if you need to extend your cables um, so that they'll reach the area of the control room it's just uh, just there we are it's as simple and as easy as that so that's that one what's in when they're out when they're on yep looks uh, a little bit over this so there's there'll be another one here and there'll be another one over the galley um, um, seems strange that they haven't put one in the galley but never mind we'll sort that out and we'll do that we'll do that I'll go do that and then we'll come back and show you what it's all like all right see you in a moment there we are um this doesn't take long to do at all um I thought I'd leave the last one out um just to show you uh, the one over the uh, the galley for the the chef, I I, th I thought I'd show you what I mean by um, if you put these if if you don't put these down far enough, they'll uh, get masked amongst the frames in the in the submarine. If I find the hole, I get this thing in. There we go. Now you will see there. Um, these lights are also a little bit directional so if you pull it up it will hide it, it will highlight most of the framework in there see how these on the right hand side are sort of highlighting the frames uh, if you push it too far down it becomes a bit overpowering and also as, as you see they are directional as well so if you turn them around a little bit and just bounce them bounce the light off the white paint it gives it that much better uh, effect almost like uh, the real thing sort of a uh, yeah they're bright but they're a, they're a, a reflected light most of the time so they're it's not all doom and gloom on submarines I can assure you of that uh, but uh, obviously the power in the submarine isn't what it is today with fluorescent lights and everything else so there we are uh, there's the galley and the chef all lit up uh, we'll just finish this one off just with a spot of uh, filler just in in there to hold it and that's another section all done and lit uh, I really think this submarine does need lighting um, if you've got the kit and you're unsure about lighting it I'd say do it for a few extra quid uh, it's well worth lighting because once you get the clear parts on uh, the clear whole side it becomes a little bit reflective uh, and it's difficult to see through the plastic to the inside so uh, yeah I do think the, uh, the colour of the lights make a difference uh, and these uh, speaking of color of lights these are the warm white they're not white lights they're a warm white light uh, which gives that much more uh, authentic glow uh, right I'll go and do the rest of them and then we'll look at putting them into the hull as I say I'll have to rejig everything here at the bench uh, take you over to the dinner table and we'll have a look over there and we'll see you in a moment when it's all set up. When I've done this and it's all set up and done. See you in a moment. Right, in this section, um, I'm afraid there's no sound. Uh, so it seems like we'll have to do a voiceover uh, when we look at uh, doing all this. Uh, where we'll put all these compartments into the hull itself. Uh, as for the hull, it's been primed in black. Um, all the uh, outer fittings have been put on it, uh, apart from the obviously the conning tower, and we'll leave that till later on. One thing you need to do first before we put everything in the hull is to check it all over. Uh, have a have a look. Make sure that uh, all the painting's right, uh, all the lights work, any parts that are missing are already put on. Uh, and then it's a matter of uh, just simply fit them in the hull. 
they are going to be a tight fit if you remember or if you've used trumpeter before you'll know that the tolerances on the parts of trumpeter are really going to be quite tight really with this voiceover I could just make up anything I want as I go along it's really hard to try and remember what you have said uh, when you've been recording now what I found is with the compartments is that um, there's obviously the, the as we keep mentioning trumpeter seems to have uh, been provisioned for lighting uh, with the, the the cable routes in the back and on the end of each uh, compartment is a notch to run the cables through. All the cables will run from the forward and aft and they'll run towards the middle section of the submarine where they will all connect up uh, as we said behind the control room. Then the, the uh, clear part does look like it's had a section cut out of it uh, where uh, switches or cables could be fit for the live feed uh, for the, uh, the, the, the lighting. Uh, that uh, obviously, is, as we say, it's probably something in the future that troubles will bring out. Now if you look on each compartment and in the hull itself you'll see some locating pegs uh, on the uh, ends of the compartments on the bulkheads. These are all in different positions for each uh, compartment so there's no uh, chance of getting them wrong so that one isn't slightly forward of another one. Uh, the, locating, the, the pegs themselves will go into locating slots within the hull. What you've got to remember is that when we fit the first compartment, which will be the front torpedo room, uh, we need to fit it perfectly. You'll need to find the correct slot for it to sit into because as you know, we, as we keep saying with trumpeter, the tolerances are such that if you're two millimeters out in this section, it'll sort of have a domino effect as you go further on back. And by the time you fit six compartments at two, uh, millimeters each that's 12 millimeters at the end uh, so we're going to be out quite a way so you really have to make sure that these are seated correctly or you and you will also have trouble fitting the glass uh, fitting the see-through section to the hull so as we can see here here's the first section going in just for a test fit for now You'll feel it click in, you'll feel it slot in and it will only fit in the, the correct, correct locating slots. And after you've spent all your precious time building these, you're going to be really careful uh, that you don't push everything off or knock anything or anything falls off. See here, I'm just taking my time to make sure it's all fit nice and snug. Sometimes, if you find it won't fit, it could be the cables themselves. Uh, if you put the lighting cables in, it could be them holding the uh, the compartment out from the back because there's quite. Although it looks like there's lots of room. There's not so much room at the back uh, uh, to what, between the hull and the compartment. That's the first one in. Right, here I'm going to have a go at fitting the second compartment. Obviously the cables uh, run through these slots.
Uh, that's that one in. Now the next section would be the control room. But we're going to leave that out for now. It sits in there like that. We'll leave it out and we'll go and fit the after compartments, the, the compartments that fit after these. It's also quite difficult doing these voiceovers, trying to remember what I did. There's the rear living quarters. So we'll take that one out. We can fit these in. I, I, what I'm doing here, I'm actually fitting it the wrong way around because the one after this, the uh, diesel room, uh, should go in first. Well, what I'm saying here is that uh, because the aft section, the uh, the rear section, the aft torpedo room doesn't go on to last, we're going to need to make provision to provide the lighting in that compartment with a uh, supply. Uh, so the best thing to do is take an extra length of uh, supply cable and feed that through. Uh, and just leave it loose out, out of the rear for the moment. You'll, it'll all become clear in a moment. Also, the, uh, another provision we've got to make for is the uh, control tower, the uh, conning tower. That's got lighting in it. Uh, we'll what I plan to do is paint everything first and because the conning tower is already painted I'm going to leave that off. So once again like the aft compartment I'm going to need to leave uh, provision to supply the lighting that's in the conning tower. Or the bridge fin. Or the sail. Depends where you're from. There we go. There's the engine room going in now. Uh, we lay the cable in for the aft section, the aft torpedo room. They'll fit in nice and easily and the feed cables will be nice and neat uh, fitting in the uh, cableway slots. So all that's left to do now really is to connect everything up, uh, secure all these um, compartments in, glue them in, let them set, uh, and then finally we can connect the control room up and fit that one in as well. Now it is going to be tight, uh, you want to make sure that the ends of each compartment uh, are nice and smooth and clean, free of pin, uh, and we'll look at fitting that. Uh, towards the end of the next section. So all we've got there in this cable in this area now is the feed cables for the lighting compartment for the lightings in e for the lighting in each compartment. Uh, we'll use some connector box like that to connect them all up. And that's where we'll connect the uh, the feed cable to the main feed from your transformer or your uh, battery pack. Anyway, we'll go on and I'll fit all these now. I'll get everything glued in, so we'll come back and see you in a moment. Right, we're done. That's all the compartments uh, glued in position for the final time. Uh, all the feed cables are fed through 
uh, to the middle section behind the control room and connected into this connector block here that I'm showing you. Uh, it's aerodated in uh, so it's not going to come loose anywhere and also connected to that is the feed from the battery pack or transformer whatever you're going to use. You could perhaps even use a USB connection if you're clever enough. Um, to stop the pulling uh, on the cable itself I've tied a knot uh, and drilled through a, a little section that I think is going to be uh, maybe a cable clamp. It's just to stop the pulling on that because the connections into the um, connector block will be quite fragile and we don't want them pulled out because you're not going to get back into this. You're not going to be able to um, to get back in and repair it should the cables pull out. So there we've uh, tabbed to a one final test of the lighting um, and I think what I'll do now I'll pull back a little bit and we can have a look and see everything uh, all the lights for the first time really let's turn some of the uh, studio lights out studio lights like that and we'll have a look round uh, there's the forward torpedo room uh, the forward living quarters, the sonar room and everything, all very atmospheric with the lighting. Now if you are thinking of getting the lights for this kit, um, I've been in touch with Jennifer uh, and she tells me that she's had an unprecedented uh, demand for these lights. Uh, she, she, she is working through the orders so my suggestion would be to um, if you are planning lights for this kit is order them from Jennifer when you buy the kit and that that way by the time that uh, you're ready to fit the lights she'll have been able to uh, sort of uh, complete your order and then ship them out to you. Um, she doesn't take any payment in advance of them so that, so you don't have to pay up front you just pay for when they're ready to to be shipped. Now then here we go we need to slide this uh, compartment in uh, to its final resting place and it's going to be tight. One of the things that I did find that would help would be to take a part out. Uh, the part that goes across the top, uh, i show you now that's this bit. Uh, if you haven't glued it in, you might be lucky and it might uh, come out if you spring it out. It just helps uh, to put the compartment in and then see behind so you can make sure that you're getting all the cables in and you're not trapping anything and then it will just quite easily slip back in and be uh, glued in later. Anyway, uh, that's about all for getting all these sections in. So we'll see you for the next bit. Welcome back. I hope the last section didn't spoil your enjoyment too much uh, due to the um, uh, voiceover. It was only when I got to this stage I was about to button everything up I just checked everything in the editing suite and realized that uh, my microphone hadn't switched on uh, due to Windows doing an update and putting everything back to default again. Uh, never mind, um, got it sorted in the end. As I say I hope it didn't uh, spoil your enjoyment too much. Uh, anyway after that we've got the control room put in uh, it is a tight fit, um, a, probably a test of your modelling skills because if it's too loose um, there's something going to be wrong somewhere. Uh, you really need to make sure that the ends are clear of paint, uh, glue and everything like that uh, on, both, on, on all the compartments and then it will slide in gently just, taking, just making sure that the cables and things aren't trapped behind. Um, this stage then is the final stage where you need to uh, probably leave it overnight so you can come back uh, to a, a, with a fresh eye and have a look completely right the way through, have a touch up with any paint 
uh, give it a dust. Uh, I've, blow, I've uh, gone over and, and blown this out with the, the airbrush, an empty airbrush. I've gone through with uh, a duster, some Q-tips, uh, cotton buds. Uh, cleaned it all out, cleaned all the dust out. Give the inside of the uh, clear plastic uh, a clean and a polish. Uh, and making sure that everything's everything's right because uh, this is the, the last chance you'll get. It'd be no good when you've got this on uh, to uh, have a look through and think, oh crikey I haven't painted that bit or oh, there's a big lump of glue there. Never mind. Here we go. Right I'll zoom out so we can see a little bit better uh, once I find a button to do it with. Right because now um, we're going to uh, fit fit this bit the clear plastic yeah it's a bit it's going to be a bit difficult to see this one for the reflections off the clear plastic and two because it's clear uh, a bit difficult to pick up on camera uh, final check just check all the lights are on uh, really a little bit late now because uh, everything's fastened in now but uh, we could maybe still try and uh, correct something that's wrong yep all the lights are on so now we're gonna go in and fit this I'll move it down so we can see what's going on we'll start at the very beginning uh, and just move that round a bit Right, we need to do a test fit on this first. Uh, I've, I've already done one, but uh, for the sake of the video, I will do it again. We'll need to make sure that uh, the locating lugs in here and the pins on here are all matched up because that's how we know it'll fit. There are a couple of reasons why this clear plastic may not fit. One is that it could quite possibly be twisted uh, <coughs> excuse me in that way then that you're gonna have to try and uh, adjust it and pull it round so it does fit in the end uh, two that the compartments themselves aren't seated properly inside and some of the uh, bulkheads especially here in the um, ballast tank this this bit here is ballast tank maybe catching on the plastic and pushing it out um, and three underneath uh, along the top here is a lip just you, you can just feel it if you've got the kit you can just feel it there's a lip under there now the deck needs to fit on top of that and sit on the top otherwise it'll leave you'll be able to feel it you'll feel a lip on the top so what we're going to do now are uh, with the use of uh, a number of clips uh, clamps and masking tape we're now going to attempt to fit this in to position so here goes hopefully there won't be too much swearing uh, probably a good reason why on the last section there wasn't a sound really because Swearing is involved in this kit quite a lot and as we say the tolerances with trumpeted kits are quite fine so um, you know that you're going to be struggling a little bit. <coughs> One of the reasons I decided not to paint this uh, before it goes on uh, will become apparent as I try to fit it uh, because the paint is going to get scratched or will get scratched if you paint it and also I wanted to make sure that I lined everything up and then I could go across the top and match everything uh, so we'll want some masking tape might be an idea to pull a few lengths of this off and just leave them handy because you'll be doing it one handed shortly What we're basically doing at the moment is just going to try and hold it in position 
for a final positioning. And make sure everything's there first. Just use standard masking tape because it's not going to be on too long. It's not going to uh, affect or leave stickiness on this surface. It's just for holding things in place. That one's gone in. Uh, there's another catch point there uh, that you might find it's not fitting. Is the uh, forward dive planes. Uh, the, the pin might catch through the middle. So we can now clamp under here. well right now this bit at the top of the deck as I've mentioned there we go it's seating itself in now the deck itself will need Clamp on there. Right, here we go. The deck itself will need to pull up just a little bit. It might be the ha might be handy to have a small porky tool just to lift the deck up so it sits in properly. Let's see, you can actually feel where the deck is sitting a little bit proud. I have seen people do this um, with magnets so that the, the front will come off. So they can paint the whole of the hole and then take the front off to see inside. I had considered doing that, uh, but I don't know how we'll get the fit each time to hold all this in. But if you want to have a go at that, yeah, have a go. be a good idea. Sorry if I'm getting in the way of the camera, but I need to uh, stick this down. Finally, that one goes on there. And I think, apart from a bit of gluing, we're done. <coughs> and before the final glue goes on, once more. There we go, the lights are on. There. And some more tape just at the front here. It's just holding out a little bit proud. So the, there is an ever so slight twist just in this hole. It's a clear section, the hole itself is fine, it's just a clear section, just needs to conform to all the fixings. 
<coughs> and the next bit is this to go on here <coughs> these are <coughs> excuse me these are the uh, the lights for there that will connect onto here remember how we left uh, a tail to go through the rear end that will go in there and these will clip in here Anyway, that, that deck will go in there. I'm not going to force it on while um, we're just taking part in the filming just for demonstration. But this rear section then slides and clips over here. Let's see if we can do this. there so now we have ugh, it's huge it's getting it all in now we have a completed whole section or we will have when it's all glued together um, what I'm going to do for painting as I've mentioned I'll leave it till it's done leave it till all the glue set and then I'll match the paint up with the rear end that we've already done uh, and then I will fetch I will leave all this clear all the compartments are clear at the front end there is a sort of guideline around here uh, you'll see on the the clear hole you can see a sort of guideline that may be a suggestion for painting or it might be part of the uh, whole template the whole framing itself uh, the whole plates uh, I'm not too sure on that but what I'll do I'll uh, bring it out a little bit further and paint down there but that's all part of the the next video that'll be probably the final video when you come back it will be painted uh, and we'll look at putting everything together and tying it all in with some weathering so I'll go get all this glued now I'm just going to use uh, Tamiya extra thin uh, first of all I'll just sort of more or less spot weld it with some uh, quick setting extra thin uh, spot weld it hold it all in place and then go around and glue it all down with Tamiya to be extra thin uh, but we'll leave it at that um, yeah I must again apologize about the sound uh, it's sort of mid video but hopefully we'll get there at the end and right until next time part 11 the final part I would hope, I would hope anyway um, I will see you all next time thanks for watching don't forget if you need anything about this kit any questions uh, contact me uh, ted at emodels.co.uk or visit the emodels website uh, emodels.co.uk and uh, be in touch anyway go do yours have a look at yours I hope you enjoyed this I will see you next time bye now